here, I guess. Okay, so uh, I'm Chris, and I'm going to talk about Ruby Motion. Uh, Ruby Motion is a project that just came out last week, and it says it lets you write iOS apps in Ruby. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I figured I'd check it out and see if it actually lets you do that. Um, what it does to do that is it um, takes Ruby code, it compiles it to assembly, and that assembly runs on the Objective C runtime. So you no longer have a Ruby runtime anywhere. You have Ruby code compiled running on the Objective C runtime. And I thought that sounded pretty uh, weird at first, but that, that's actually using the Mac Ruby uh, base. And so Mac Ruby is really tested and pretty stable, and it's almost 1.0. So I thought that was all right. So I downloaded the thing. Oh, I'll give you some background first. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, iPhone apps are all written in Objective C, and Objective C is a superset of C, which is a superset of C. So it goes all the way down to C, Objective C does, and it basically just adds a lot of um, object orientedness around C and C. And then it's also important to know that Rails is to Ruby the same as Cocoa is to Objective C. So Cocoa is a framework on Objective C that puts a lot of libraries and stuff on it, just like Rails puts a lot of libraries on <coughs> Ruby. Um, so Ruby Motion is an implementation of that framework, the Cocoa framework. And it's, uh, again, it runs on the, uh, the Objective C runtime. So some of the features of Ruby Motion are that you can use Ruby or Objective C libraries, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so you can tie into any Ruby library that you want. It runs actual Ruby. Or you can tie into Objective C libraries if you want. Um, it uses managed memory, which is not quite garbage collection. Um, it's actually automatic reference counting for any of you who um, follow Objective-C. That's what iOS 5 uses. Um, it's as fast as Objective-C because it compiles to assembly, which runs on Objective-C. And it's based on the Mac Ruby core, which is, is pretty stable. And they say it's App Store compatible. I don't think anyone has an app in the App Store yet <coughs> because it was just released last week. But it's not, uh, it doesn't interpret Ruby on the fly, which some people have had some problems with or anything like that. It actually is compiled. So you're supposed to be able to use it in the App Store. And one of the really cool things, uh, which I can show you, is the REPL, or the read, eval, print loop. And so we're used to this in Ruby. This is like script slash console, or IRB. Um, you can type something, and it appears right away. Uh, normally, C or Objective-C, they don't, they don't have anything like that, because it's all compiled. But this does, so that's cool. Um, right now, it costs $149. Uh, it's going to be $199 after that. So. And I don't know what a limited time is, but some limited time. Uh, so some of the pros are it uses Ruby. Um, if you use, a, use Objective-C and like Ruby better, um, this is a plus for you. You can use your existing tool chain, which is a terminal, rake, and a text editor. And I'll show you that instead of <coughs> Xcode. And Xcode is kind of, it takes up a lot of RAM, and it's kind of big, and kind of, some people think it's clunky. I actually kind of like Xcode, but it does take up a lot of RAM on my three-year-old machine. So um, you can use either Ruby or Objective-C libraries, and so you can use either. Uh, and then the read about print loop is, is pretty awesome. Uh, some of the cons are that you still need to learn Coco in order to use it. Um, it's not magic yet. I think people are going to make a lot of libraries that make it really easy, but you still need to learn basically all the APIs for, for iPhone. Um, it's a new technology. It's still untested in the App Store, although it's supposed to work. And if you bring a new developer onto the project, they can't just know Ruby or Objective-C, I mean, or Coco. They really have to know both. So it's not like you can just hire an iPhone developer and they can, they can catch on. Um, there's also some strange catches that I hope aren't going to be that big of a problem. The first is limited memory. So when you're usually writing Ruby, you don't really worry about memory at all. Um, but you're writing on a device, so you can't just create a thousand objects. You actually have to worry about your object creation and stuff like that. Um, file de dependencies, which is spelled wrong, um, it doesn't auto so because you're compiling it, you have to specify file dependencies in a kind of a weird way. It doesn't automatically do it for you. Um, so I hope they fix that. And um, concepts like error pointers feel forced. Um, so if you ever use Objective-C, you know that you can pass in a, a pointer to a pointer, a handle to an error, and then you get the error returned to you from that method. Um, in, in Ruby Motion, there's a way to do that, but it's kind of, kind of feels clunky. Um, and then there's a lot of magic going on. <laughs> it feels a lot like Rails did when I first started. Um, basically, you know, you have Ruby, which is compiled, which is weird to begin with, and then it goes into Objective-C. So um, I hope a lot of that gets, you know, you kinda, I kind of learn that as I go along. We'll see. <clears throat> so is Ruby Motion for you if you're thinking about using it? Um, if you're a Ruby developer, then quite possibly, um, because you're using Ruby the whole time. Um, you still don't have to have an understanding of Cocoa and, or a willingness to learn it. 
and you either have to be a standalone developer or your entire team has to be on board because it's not just something that some people can do. Um, it is true you can use Objective-C libraries, but if you're writing an iPhone app, really, the whole team should either be using it or, or not using it. Um, here's some resources about it before I get into a demo. Uh, RubyMotion.com, obviously. Uh, MacRuby, since it uses the MacRuby core, and most of the documentation is still good for MacRuby. And then if you're learning iPhone, um, CS193P is Stanford's iPhone class, and they have all of their lectures on iTunes University for free. So it's like 20 lectures in the last class, and there have been like four classes, and it's all for free, and there's tons and tons of, and that's how I learned uh, Objective-C, so I really recommend that, that class. You can Google for Stanford iPhone to find that. Okay, so my experience is that it matches pretty closely to Objective-C, um, so it's kind of a one-for-one -one mapping to the API there. Um, but I found it much easier to, to refactor. So I can think in Ruby, which is really nice, and Objective-C, I was having a lot of trouble kind of thinking in you know, the data structures that Objective-C gives you, even though they're pretty much the same. Um, I still like Ruby a lot better. So, um, there's a, I've ran into a couple of weird bugs, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, connect connection refused when I tried to run rake, the rake task, and then it worked the next time, which means I think they're doing some some socket magic, and um, so I hope that doesn't show up in production. But that only happened once. <coughs> and also, uh, the community is growing pretty rapidly. There's like 10 posts per day on the forum, and I think that's only going to pick up. So that's pretty cool. So far, so good. Okay, so for my demo, I'm going to show you uh, a core data example. And core data is similar to Active Record. Uh, it's not an ORM, but it's how you store uh, objects if you want to persist objects on the on the iPhone. So it uses SQLite in the background, and it's the recommended way to persist it. But it's it's pretty complex, and so I was thinking about how I can make it easier. So I'll show you what I did. So this is too big. Um, so this is what a Ruby Motion project looks like over here. Um, you have an app delegate, which is the uh, which is the way that uh, Objective C um, applications start. And so you can see this app delegate uh, tab bar up here. This is kind of what I was talking about with uh, file dependencies. I haven't figured out yet how to make uh, a module that's in a separate file that app delegate depends on so we'll work that out but um, the first thing you can see is that we have this weird application and then this did finish launching with options um, and this is some of the weirdness so application did finish launching with options is the name of a coco api and so you actually have to know some of the that's what i mean when you have to know some of the api and it has this weird uh, it uses the new hash syntax to to name the methods um, and it, it also makes this camel case with underscores, so you can see it did finish launching with options as camel case. So there's still some weirdness going on there. But anyway, so what I do is I make a controller array, and I'll, and I'll show you. This is just the setup, um, which takes a members controller and a meetings controller, which I'll, I'll show you, and it puts them in a tab bar. And so this stuff's really not that important, but so we get a tab bar out of it. And here I'll actually run it so you can see what it does, and then I'll explain what it does. So to run it, I'm just in console here. And I just run rake. And you can see it's uh, building it. And we'll try this up. And that is off the screen. Oh no. Maybe you close the open? Yeah, I think so. Alright, let's try that again. No, it'll take a while. It's, it'll just come out. My computer's three years old, so it. Uh... Oh no, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it looks like. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Let's try to drag it over here. All right, there we go. All right, so you can see uh, the tab bars on the bottom, and so we have uh, like members and meetings. So this is like in DRB, and it's a uh, table view. It's just a regular table view, and uh, you can add things. And you have member name like uh, Bob, an email address. Save it. Then you have Bob, and you can go into and edit and things like that. And so this is pretty basic stuff, but it's. Uh, 
I'll show you the code I used to write it. It's pretty magical, I think, so it's kind of cool. I, the first thing I did was I made the CTA classes. My initials are CTA, so I use CTA, but whatever. I um, wrapped core data in a few of these classes. It's kind of hard to see on the projector. Um, so the first thing I did was make this data store. And so here's like NH fetch request, NS entity description. These are all APIs that you just kind of need to know um, from Coco. So that's, that's one of the problems with it still. It's still not magic. But once you write all this, and here's this manage object. This is kind of like Active Record Base. Um, I mapped this NS string attribute. For example, I mapped a string. Um, entity is something in Coco, the Coco API. Uh, that's an important keyword. And that basically returns a new object. And I made some, some other additional. So here, save. I made those. So it feels like Active Record. And then once I have my actual class, that lets me do this. So I just have a single class meeting. And it's a CTA managed object, which is subclass of NS managed object. And it has columns. And so this I made feel a lot like um, migration. So I just say column, title, it's a string, and it's required. Meeting time is a string, and it's not required. So that's kind of cool. And then for my controller, all I do is I say which object I'm managing, and that's meeting. And all of that, and so I basically have this, and then I have one for members too, and that turns into to this. The table view does it for you. The, all this add and remove stuff, it does it for you. And so that, that was cool when I got that working. It feel, feels really like Rails did with scaffolds. So you can get data up really quick and you can get it working. So, so it was really cool. Uh, so that's about all I had. I have a bunch of examples here. Um, and they have really good examples, really good samples. And so um, if you want to see any, I can show you if there are any questions. That seems pretty awesome. I mean, like that seems very much clearly better than dealing with uh, their, what, what's the persistent store called again? Core data. Core data. Yeah, yeah. core data is, is really, so I tried doing it in Objective-C before, and the way they have you do it is they have you put everything in the app delegate at, at first. And that's a real pain, because then you have, app delegate's really kind of like a main function. You're not really have, supposed to have too much in there. And so you have all this core data set up and stuff, and so that was a pain. So I put it into a different class, and I tried to refactor it out. And then I tried sort of doing this in Objective-C, and it never really felt right. Um, but when I did it in Ruby, it just kind of felt like active record. And so that's uh, what I really liked about that, yeah. So how long do you think uh, until Apple, you know, <laughs> pulls the, uh, I don't know. the tablecloth uh, out from under this It's an interesting one? question. Um, what, I don't know that they can, actually. I mean, for, well, they can do anything they want, but um, they... It's compiling it to Objective C assembly, so it'd be really hard. It's not like a, not a library or something. It's not like the Lua. Like so, you can write code in Lua, which is actually interpreted, and it's right. not like that. It's not interpreted. It's actually Objective C assembly running. Um, yeah, if they could the go, device, I mean, so they could go look at the binaries and reject them out of spite. They they could. <laughs> it's true, but there are Mac, there, there's Mac Ruby uh, apps in the App Store, so the yeah, App Store is different. It is a little different. So I don't know. It's a good question. <coughs> Okay. I don't know, they have Flash apps in the Do they? iOS App Store now, yeah. You can compile them down to. Check it out. Their license <laughs> accepts Lua, doesn't it? Yeah, it can, Lua, yeah, you can for do sure. And that's, that's definitely interpreted. But yeah, I think, you can. No. I think Flash is doing the same thing like the LLVM thing. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, this uses the same compiler that you have to have Xcode installed to use the LLVM to compile it. So. Okay. Good. Great for us. <laughs> yeah. Is anybody else? I played with it, it was awesome. Yeah. I ran rake, rake simulate and rake deploy to the phone, and it was just like, it was so much easier than Xcode. Yeah. I mean, it felt pretty nice. <laughs> we got a little trolling from our native uh, I, uh, Objective-C programmer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh look, they added a profiler and a really nice debugger, and he just keeps posting links it to Xcode. Right, 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 Xcode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'll show you the coolest part, which is the you know, redevelop print loop. Or maybe it's not the coolest part, but it's pretty cool. So, um, so I have this open now, and if I hold on Command, yeah, you can see these um, red boxes that start appearing over my different things. And you can see in my terminal how um, it, you can see the Ruby objects that I'm, that I'm mousing over. And then if I click, now self, if I say self, so that's my actual UI view, uh, table view. So I can do like self dot background color equals UI color red color. And it turns red. <laughs> so. So that's pretty neat. So you can uh, inline just change your, your code and you can just like script console you can create objects and do all that kind of stuff. So.
That's something object Objective C definitely doesn't have. So, um, I'm sorry. Does it recompile? No, it doesn't recompile. Um, so this is where I think the socket magic is happening. What I think is happening is that um, your the repo is talking to the simulator um, with some socket stuff, and so I think it's pushing messages back and forth. So yeah, it doesn't recompile. It's um, sort of interpreted, <laughs> but it's still not interpreted. It, uh, it's just magic. <laughs> so it's the whole API, I guess the whole, okay, this is going to sound stupid because I don't know anything about iOS programming. Is all of the like iOS API available? Can you do all of, all of the, all of the UI elements are available and everything? Yes, uh, they implemented the entire API. So um, one concern that people had is how fast are they going to be able to put new API, you know, when new APIs come out. Mm -hmm. um, I think the answer is pretty fast because, um, so, before it's released to the public, new APIs are available quite a while beforehand to developers, and so I think that gives them a lot of time. Um, and the other answer is that you can you can run Objective C code. You like you can link to it, just kind of kind of like in Ruby, you can link to C code if you know how to do the dance. So you can run Objective C code if you want to get to the APIs and they don't support it yet. So. Is there any performance difference as we're Objective C versus this? Yeah. So this. So, since it runs on the Objective C runtime, there's supposed to be no performance difference. Um, in practice, though, I think there's going to be because I found already that I'm more reckless with my Ruby code than I am with Objective C code. Um, because Objective C, like, you have to like alloc and init everything, and so when you set, you can't just you know create something. So when you alloc and init, something, you're like, oh, I'm using memory, and so you are more conscious of that. In Ruby, you're just like, oh, okay, new objects. Wee. So. Um, <laughs> So I think there will be a performance uh, difference, but not because of the not because of Ruby motion. I think it's just the way you wrote Ruby code. I think it's going to be different. Let me just make these fifteen thousand active records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like already. So some, I did something already. I went through an Objective C, which is I eliminated caching and core data. So right now, every time I pull up the list or save anything, it pulls up everything and saves everything. And so that's something that I can change later on, but right now, it, so that's something that you never do in Objective-C because that would feel very wrong. But in Ruby, it's like, all right, sure. <laughs> but with your current record, record yeah, set. With, the, with the single record set, it doesn't matter at all. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you, sir. Awesome.